Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are going to be talking about a massive warm-up that is coming to the eastern United States. This warm-up is going to likely last well into May, uh, and that is very good news. A lot of us have been looking forward to this warmer temperature after the very cold pattern we found ourselves in. <music> Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you think this upcoming May is going to be temperature-wise? Do you think we're going to have a warmer May overall or a colder May overall? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at how this winter went, because I'm just going to break down the past few months, because it's been really odd. First off, the winter, we had a very cold winter in the central and eastern United States, especially when you compare it to the previous five winters or so. Uh, we have one of the colder ones in that time period for most of the United States, with the exception of the southwestern United States, maybe even the western United States as a whole, you could say. Then in March, we had a massive flip. We had a very warm March for the eastern two-thirds of the country, and then a very cold March there for the western third of the country. Very, very interesting flip we saw there. The March we just had was pretty much the opposite of the entire winter we saw before it. And then, basically, this is how the most of April has gone, the later portion of April. We've had very cold temperatures, again, for the central United States especially, but a lot of that has creeped into the eastern United States as well, with a positive PNA, very warm west coast of the United States. With that being said, we're going to take a look now at the upcoming temperatures and just see if it's going to be similar or if we're going to see a big flip. A little bit of a sneak peek, there will be a flip. All right, let's get right into things. We're taking a look at today, and as you can see, those cold temperatures are still around there for the north central United States especially, but then also the eastern United States, most of it at least, with the exception of the northeast and a little bit of the southeast as well. But look at the west coast. We have those colder than normal conditions. That is indicating a negative PNA. So from this point, I can tell you that over the next couple of days, we are going to see a massive warming trend out east from the west coast of the United States based off of that. As that temperature pattern just trickles downstream from west to east, uh, that's, you know, usually from west to east is the easiest way to go. As you can see, for Monday, it's going to be April 26th. We see that negative PNA get even colder there, and then we see the warm-up for the plains occurring. We're still cold in the eastern United States. Not quite as cold as it has been, but still pretty cold. But by the time we reach Tuesday, April 27th, you can tell that a massive warm-up is taking place. Also, that negative PNA is still in place. Those greens and those blues there, that is where we're about 10 to 15 to even 20 degrees below normal there for the southwestern United States. And then those reds and even those brown shades showing up there for the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, and the Great Plains, that is where we're at about 10 to 20 degrees above average temperature. So there is going to be a massive warm-up here for the central and the eastern United States. Now what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on till, towards Wednesday, and we're just going to see how long this warm-up is going to last. All right, now here we are taking a look at Wednesday, April 28th, and as you can see, those warm temperatures have definitely set in for the Ohio Valley, the mid-Atlantic the mid there, and then even the Northeast. But look at the West Coast. Warmer than normal conditions arrive, so this is the sign of a positive PNA taking place, which usually encourages colder than normal conditions east of that point. So we're going to watch for that closely as we move on through these days. But generally, we have about 10 to 15 degrees above normal temperatures for the entire Mid-Atlantic, Northeast, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes. It is going to be so nice. We're expecting widespread 80s, so it is going to be very, very nice for that time period. Even Thursday here, as you can see, is very nice for the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. But look at the warm-up for the West. That is just building in further, and I definitely suspect that after Thursday, we could be seeing a little bit of a cool down or at least a return to normal for the eastern United States. So we're going to be watching extremely closely for that pattern flip up here as we see that positive PNA just take place here for the western United States. They had a very brief but very potent Arctic blast uh, that is now basically dissipated here by this frame. By the time we take a look at Friday, you can see that warm up gets even more extreme there for the western United States. So they have been all over the place back and forth. Uh, the Mid-Atlantic and Southeast is still holding on to those warmer temperatures, but a cooldown is now occurring for the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and some of those surrounding regions. Uh, so obviously a massive flip-up. That pattern did not last very long, according to this European model. 
Uh, so a very interesting just situation overall we find ourselves in. By the time we reach Saturday, May 1st, you can see that bit of a cooldown arrives for the northeastern United States. That warm-up is still around for the western United States. That positive PNA is really just taking hold there. And um, that is what is a, that is what it's basically allowing for this big cooldown to occur for the eastern United States. Now, for those of us who enjoy the warmer temperatures, there is a bit of good news here. On Sunday, May 2nd, look at the northwest. We see that cold return to the western United States, indicating a negative PNA is trying to come back here. And those warmer temperatures push a little bit further east towards the central United States. Now, we still have a cool down there for the mid-Atlantic and the northeast, but that should generally be coming to an end uh, here if we see this negative PNA really, really take hold here on this European model. So what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on and we're going to see if that warm-up returns for the eastern United States and if it does, how strong it could be. All right, now here we are taking a look here at the 3rd of May here, and this is going to be a Monday. And as you can see, that cooldown is around for the West now. It's fully back and in place, basically a trough at this point set over the Rockies and some of the four corner states as well. But as you can see, that warm-up basically extends from the Plains and through the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and into the eastern United States with those reds and browns returning, again, indicating about 10 to 15 degrees above normal temperatures. It is going to get hot again, it appears, for that beginning portion of May. So yes, that warm-up does appear like it is going to return according to this model. Now, by the time we reach Tuesday, May 4th, you can see that warm-up is still around there for the eastern half of the country, and that cooldown is still around for the Rockies. But by the time we move on to our European Ensemble model here, this is going to be for May 5th, we're reaching the long range now, so take this with a grain of salt. That warm-up is still around there for the eastern United States, but that warm-up returns for the west coast of the United States, and a cooldown returns for more of the central United States. And really, after this point, we get kind of an averaged out uh, ensemble run here by the time we're reaching about Thursday, May 6th. What ends up happening is you see there's only basically the lighter blues and the lighter yellows. This is what I've commonly referred to as a very averaged out frame here from our European ensemble model. And basically what this means is that we have 30 different members of an ensemble model because basically what it is is it's a bunch of different models working together and then it's taking the mean average of all 30 of them and showing what that is. So once we reach the longer range what ends up happening is these models separate further and further apart where there's some showing above average, some showing below average, and everything in between and then it ends up getting averaged out because five degrees above normal you know and then five degrees below normal if you take the mean average of those two it is average. So when I say averaged out, it's basically those coming together, uh, showing the opposite. So that's when our accuracy is lowering, basically. Obviously, if you have two different models disagreeing that much, it's lowering my confidence extremely. Uh, so by the time we're reaching Thursday, May 6th, I'm going to choose to not move beyond this frame here according to this model. Now, here we are taking a look at the teleconnections. And as you can see, our AO slash Arctic Oscillation is what that stands for. Uh, we basically see that this is in a pretty slightly negative phase and it kind of reaches back towards average by the time we're reaching about May 5th or 6th. That could be to the, due to that averaging out. Uh, that would actually not surprise me at all. Uh, but generally we're hovering right around you know one point below normal uh, here on our Arctic Oscillation, which is gonna be a very weak negative AO there. Our PN, or sorry, our NAO here as well is just slightly negative, and then it's going to creep back towards normal around the 6th of May. Uh, and these are basically going to be non-events. We're not really going to feel the AO or the NAO because I think the PNA is going to be driving the pattern. So let me just show you guys what this looks like. As you can see, we're in a negative PNA right now. Again, that means that there's colder than normal conditions over the western United States, and we creep positive. So that's when the warm-up kind of comes to an end for just a day or two there. When that creeps positive, uh, what ends up happening is we get warmer than normal conditions for like three days over the western United States, and you saw that just a few minutes ago, and then that ends. We see the colder temperatures return for the western United States, and that allows for the warm-up to continue for the eastern United States. There's just a little bit of a lull in there for like three days uh, where we see a little bit of a flip there. But I think this PNA is really going to drive the pattern. 
because uh, it, again, trickles downstream. It's going to drive the pattern. Our confidence is at a high because this is starting literally in the next couple of days, and we're already seeing the transition start. Uh, there's no doubt that there will be a warm-up at least this first few days of the warm-up. So we're at a 6 out of 6 on our confidence tab. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think the severe weather risk for Tuesday will be? And by the way, I did make a Patreon post for that severe weather risk. So if you're here and you're waiting for information on that, I made a Patreon post on that you can check out today. But FMP said, I think an enhanced risk is likely for next Tuesday, and I definitely agree there. We have a slight risk right now for Tuesday, and it's very large, and I think we will end up with at least an enhanced risk. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Van Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Blomo, Adam S., Larry the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis, alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Coalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flagos, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron entry of the day, you could do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Weather Top Dog Hair Farms 1, and then Superfan Phoenix Nimitz. If you would like to join this, you could do so by clicking that button next to that subscribe button and joining this today. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Be sure to comment down below to also help that algorithm out. And subscribe for more weather related content. I will see you guys in the next video.